What I absolutely love about macro photography is that it's always there for you. You don't have to travel to exotic locations. The amazing tiny wonders of nature are at your very own doorstep, in your backyard, at your local park, essentially everywhere around us. And what's most exciting is that you never know what you're gonna encounter. You feel like an explorer every time you pick up that camera and discover what's hiding on vegetation, on tree bark, or the fallen leaves under your feet. It has taught me to be observant, to be patient, to be curious, and first and foremost, to appreciate all these tiny precious living things that play a significant role in maintaining the balance of life. In today's video, I'll show you images of 15 species I captured at the local nature reserve in suburban Melbourne. I will also briefly talk about each. The first few shots are of a slender green or beaver. This species is found throughout Australia and is diurnal, which means it's active throughout the day. In this shot that I took from above, you can see that the abdomen has an elongated heart shape and the legs have long spiky hairs, similar to that of lynx spiders. I took several images and managed to combine two different stacks. The first stack contained four images and this one had three. Luckily, Zurin Stacker was able to create this final stack, which was taken at a maximum magnification ratio of about 1.4x. This next species is a plant parasitic Hemipteran. Hemiptera is an order of insects that, for example, aphids, cicadas, and leafhoppers belong to. This specimen was extremely small, no bigger than 1.5mm, I'd say. I really love the patterns and the golden orange colors of its exoskeleton. This following picture is of a white flank black braconid wasp. It is a parasitoid wasp which has an orange head, black thorax and black abdomen with white patterns on the flank. Its wings are tinted in black color. The larvae of this wasp is known to parasitize on longicorn beetle larvae. I dedicated a full video to this amazing species, so if you're interested, then definitely check it out. I will leave a link in the description as well. Let's go to our next subject. This tiny brown orb beaver is a typical orb beaver, not sure of the species. It was sitting snugly on the leaf of a small sapling in the undergrowth. I wanted to create a stack shot from closer, but unfortunately it was too breezy at the time. The next image is of a very small green iridescent leaf beetle. They belong to the group of case-bearing leaf beetles. Case-bearing leaf beetles got their name because of their larval habit of carrying a case of waste material. Some of these beetles also have a symbiotic relationship with ants, which is so interesting. This next photo is of a mushroom. This genus contains about 15 described species that are widely distributed in both temperate and tropical regions. I really love the texture of both the gills and the cap, and I think that the high contrast black and white conversion really highlights the beauty of this fungi. This next image is of a very small moth fly. They have hairy bodies and wings, giving them a moth-like appearance, but they are actually members of the family of true flies. There are more than 2,600 described species worldwide. This makes their order one of the most diverse in the world. They are not known to carry any human diseases, but Psychorex silesia can transmit microfilaria, which is the early life stage of certain parasitic nematodes. This next series is of a red velvet mite I captured while it was foraging on tree bark. They are usually found on leaf litter and eat the eggs of insects or entire small insects, including those of several crop pests. They are being studied as possible biological control agents. Only a few animals eat velvet mites, apparently because they are very bad tasting. The bright red color presumably serves as a warning to would-be predators. This next species is a tricolor soldier beetle. I have captured it a number of times before and I really like the red-orange stripe behind the black prothorax the yellow abdomen and the metallic green elytra. The elytra is the forewing of beetles. The next couple of shots are of a nocturnal crab spider, the grass crab spider. Like other crab spiders, they are masters of ambush and disguise. They stalk their prey at night from an ambush position on a grass stem or from the underside of a leaf. They can sense the vibrations caused by invertebrates moving on the leaf's upper side and quickly pounce on the victim. What I find really fascinating about this genus is that they facilitate interaction between honeybees and plants. 
they have an ability to reflect the UV light, which makes flowers more attractive to honeybees. Honeybees, butterflies, flies and beetles make up their diet and are grabbed by the spider's spiny front legs and immediately bitten on the head area. The venom acts quickly to subdue the prey. The venom and the digestive juices then liquefy the insect's internal tissues, which the spider sucks up, leaving an empty but lifelike husk. The next portrait is of a skipper butterfly. I spotted this green grass dart on a dried reed at the wetlands. They are quite skittish, but I got lucky this time. They are diurnal and are named for their quick darting flight habits. I really like the golden color of the hairs and scales that cover their body and wings. The next image is of a slender sex spider. They are found throughout Australia in forests and grasslands. I stumbled upon this one hiding on the underside of a leaf. They are known to make small cylindrical or egg-shaped silk retreat sacs. They have slender bodies, large jaws and long thin legs, with the males being especially slender. Most are shades of cream, brown and yellow. The jaws of the male spider are particularly enlarged. Sex spider bites are not common and symptoms are usually minor such as local pain and swelling. However, slender sex spider bite may also include headache, nausea and local skin ulceration. These next few pictures are of very small mites that I spotted on moss on the ground. This species is called red-legged earth mite. Adult mites are approximately 1 mm in length with a velvety black body and 8 orange red colored legs. These mites are one of the most important invertebrate pest species in Australian agriculture. They are common and widespread and active from autumn to late spring in southern Australia. If severe infestations occur, biological pest control agents such as the anistis mites might help suppress their populations as well. The second last species is a beautiful garden jumping spider I found on a relatively cold morning as it was exploring the leaf of a gum tree. If you are fascinated by jumping spiders as much as I am, then I have a whole playlist for you to check out. I have videos of many amazing species including peacock spiders. In these last couple of shots you can see the eggs of an autumn gum moth. This was the very first time I spotted such and I really loved how colorful those eggs were. Apparently they lay batches of 10 to 150 eggs which at first are pale green but change to a mottled brown color as they develop over the course of two to three weeks. This moth species is found from southern Queensland to Tasmania, South Australia and southwestern Australia. It is a serious pest of many eucalypts and can defoliate entire young trees. Their populations are controlled by parasitic wasps that parasitize both the eggs and caterpillars. Anyway, I should wrap this up. I hope you like the images and the information and the story behind each of the subjects. If you're new to my channel and enjoy the content, I'd love it if you subscribed. I'd really appreciate it. Also, you might want to check out these videos as well. Thank you so much and see you all very soon in the next one.